What's up guys, Roman from RNS Entertainment here with another episode of Comic History. This time we're going to be talking about the origin of The Mask from Dark Horse Comics, which you may be familiar with from the movie starring Jim Carrey or the following animated series. The Mask in the comics is a bit more violent than these other iterations, and the comic is pretty insane. In the comic, Stanley Ipkiss, a neurotic weirdo, buys a jade mask as a reconciliation present for his girlfriend Kathy, who he apparently mistreated previously. After buying the mask, he gets into a confrontation with a gang of criminals named the Butchers, and they beat the shit out of him and leave him in the street. Going back to his girlfriend's apartment, Stanley fantasizes about ways to kill and hurt the gang members, and he hears the mask speak to him, urging him to go and do it. He gives the mask to his girlfriend and she forgives him, though it's clear they have a strained relationship. They have sex, and Stanley wakes up in the middle of the night half asleep and wanders to the bathroom, where the jade mask is sitting on the toilet seat. Assuming that Kathy must have been leaving it there to fuck with him, he puts it on to go scare her back, but the second it touches him, it attaches and forms a gigantic, grinning, toothy face. The mask essentially gives him reality-altering powers, makes him impervious to death while he wears it, and makes him completely insane. After spazzing out on some guy in the street, Stanley gets run over by a car, but gets right up afterwards, declaring that he will use his amazing abilities to help others in need. He then goes straight to score settling, sneaking into the hideout of the gang members that attacked him, bashing heads in with a baseball bat, breaking noses with wrenches, setting a guy on fire, and then summoning an Uzi right before getting a section of his chest blown out with a shotgun, whirling around and filling the guy with bullets, and burning the building down while cheerfully strolling away. The next morning, Kathy wakes up and walks in on the mask in her shower, but after slamming the door, Stanley comes out and plops down in front of the television. Several weeks later, Stan has been mooshing off his girlfriend, drinking beer, and going out regularly to kill people on his shit list. He started wearing a military outfit, become obsessed with watching the news, and one day while arguing with Kathy, he almost hits her and stops to storm out of the apartment with the mask. He heads over to an auto shop where the mechanics damage vehicles brought in to rip the owner out of their money, including one Stanley Ipkiss, and murders them with a muffler before going to his old elementary school and torturing and murdering a teacher who made fun of him when he was a kid. We then see the aftermath of the auto shop murders when a Lieutenant Kellaway is called in to investigate. One guy was strung up with a chain and impaled through the head with a variety of tools, and the other had the entire muffler shoved into his head. Returning to his girlfriend's apartment, Stan punches a kid in the head and tricks an old lady, crashing out to get some sleep before Kathy gets home, and thinking again that he'll start being a superhero tomorrow. Kathy gets home and throws the mask in the garbage before Stan wakes up, and before dinner starts to talk to him about how he's changed, and all he can ask is where is the mask. When she tells him she threw it out, he loses it and almost has a nervous breakdown, but then he realizes that killing his old elementary school teacher just for picking on him was crazy, and decides the mask being gone is for the best. He sits down in front of the TV and Kathy hears him cackling with laughter over the guy with the muffler shoved into his head, and remembers someone else who should have been on the list, some guy that owes him 60 bucks and won't cough it up. Kathy is fed up and has had enough and kicks him out of the apartment, with his only response to ask for the mask again. Later that night, Stan is fishing around in Kathy's garbage looking for the mask, but finds out that she didn't throw it out and decides that she must have kept it for herself climbing up the drain pipe to sneak into her apartment and steal it. Climbing in through the bathroom window, it slams down on him halfway through and he howls in pain, waking up Kathy and prompting her to call the cops. Assuming that Kathy is still asleep, Stan walks into her room and gets a lamp smashed into his head, with Kathy realizing that it was Stan breaking in just as the cops show up to the apartment. Kathy drags Stan into the other room and then tries to get rid of the cops, with Stan coming to in the other room and putting on the mask yelling at the cops to get out of their house, and then asking Kathy to come back there while preparing to bash her in the head with a lamp. The cops go back to investigate, and the first one in the door is brained with the lamp, with the other cops shooting bullet after bullet at Stan, who even after getting shot in the head is, of course, fine. He pulls yet another lamp out of his jacket pocket and smashes the second cop in the head with it, before heading over to the fridge and popping open a beer. Another cop comes in the room and picks up another lamp and smashes it into the mask, who whirls around with pistols blazing leaving the third cop full of bullets. Multiple cop cars arrive, and Stan disguises himself as an old lady to get a clear shot at them with a bazooka, blowing a hole in the building and killing several cops. One of the police officers from the apartment wakes up and comes across the other officers, and they assume that since they don't recognize him, he must be the mask in disguise. But after shooting him dead, they realize that one of the men who got blown up by the bazooka is standing right next to them. Stan slaps the officers in the face and runs away, and after leading them to the roof, bounces around the panels using his reality-bending powers to violently kill all of them. Kelly 
Holloway shows up with a small army of cops and they all fire on Stan, blasting him full of holes, knocking out his eye, and pushing him off the building. But right before he lands on a cop car, he hits the brakes, casually stepping into the driver's seat and taking it for a joyride, lobbing a grenade into a truck on his way out. Stan then relentlessly trolls the handcuffed convict in the back of the cop car, driving directly into a convenience store for a beer, and then shooting more police on their tail. Stan then sees who he's really after, that guy who owes him 60 bucks. Kellaway gets the report of Stan's location and sets up a roadblock, while Stan is busy running down the guy who owes him money. He flattens the guy and is then crashed into the post office by a pursuing police car, but the drivers then notice the mask on the top of the car, crazily singing to himself while chopping into the vehicle with a battle axe. The car comes up to the roadblock and crashes into it, with Stan pulling out flamethrowers and mini guns, firing indiscriminately on the cops, setting them on fire and blowing off their heads. The mask pops up a few blocks over, emerging from the sewers and killing an officer on stakeout. Heading back to the apartment, the mask tells Stan that they need to leave town, with Stan agreeing and throwing the mask onto the bed to gather up his things. Suddenly, Stan is shot twice through the back with a pistol, and we see that Kathy had put on the mask herself, becoming the new version of the psychotic character with Stan bleeding out. The mask is a crazy comic, which started off as a one-shot idea based on characters like the Joker and the Creeper, but ended up becoming a long-running Dark Horse series and spawning several toned-down adaptations. This episode of Comic History was made possible by one of our patrons. Patrons. If you have any comic book storyline or character that you'd like to see a comic history on, go to patreon.com slash RNS Entertainment. One of the rewards for donating at a certain level is to commission any episode of comic history, which will come out the month you donate. Donating helps support the channel an incredible amount, it funds books and research, and is a great way to both help us out and commission content specifically for you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Check out the links in the video and in the description box below for more episodes of comic history as well as all sorts of other great content on comics, TV, movies, and a lot more. Also, make sure to subscribe to my gaming channel, RNS Gaming, like and follow us on Facebook, and I'll see you guys next time.